At Hashirahima Anchorage on the 24th of June, 1944, Fukui Shizuho stated, One ship. Only one ship. The disastrous battle of the Marianas had just occurred. The brand new Taiho was lost, along with the Shokaku and the Hiyo. Fukui was a technical sub-lieutenant within the Japanese Navy, and he played a role in designing the hulls of both the Shokakus and the Taiho. Though Zuikaku managed to return to port without suffering any fatal damage, the ship had been hit by several near misses, which caused a lot of splintering along the hull, and the ship would need to go through a series of repairs, and during that time frame, its anti-aircraft complement would be increased. The ship would emerge from its repairs with a staggering 341 anti-aircraft barrels with eight coaxial Type 89 12.7cm high-angle guns, 20 triple-mount Type 96 machine guns, 36 single-mount Type 96 machine guns, eight 28 barreled rocket launchers, and five Type 92 7.7mm mobile machine guns. A factor in the loss of Shokaku and Taiho was the rupturing of their forward avgas tanks due to torpedo hits, and so Zuikaku would have to receive modified installations to protect its aviation tanks. Two bulges were fitted to the bow of the ship on either side of the aviation tank, and they were both filled with iron concrete, and the double hull at the bottom of the ship underneath the tank was also filled with iron concrete. These alterations changed the bow wave on the ship, as can be seen in photographs. The ventilation system to exhaust avgas vapors in the hangars was also reinforced, as five 18-horsepower units were added, and 15 of the old 3-horsepower units were increased, though the increase in horsepower is not specified. Suikaku's crew, which by this point in the war was one of the most veteran and experienced crews the Imperial Japanese Navy had, decided that after seeing what happened to Shokaku, to disperse the fire defense equipment across the hangars in a better manner. Ideally, this would allow them to respond and fight fires quicker than had been achieved on Shokaku. After its repairs and refit were complete, the ship carried out a few trials, which proved successful, and it was once again seaworthy and almost immediately it received Operational Order 76, Operation Shogo, which was to commence on the 20th of October, 1944. This operation would result in the battles of Leyte Gulf, for which Zuikaku would be in the sub-battle of Cape Enganyo. At 6 a.m. on the 20th of October, Zuikaku departed Japan with 65 aircraft on board, 28 A6M-50 fighter planes, 16 A6M fighter bombers, 7 D4Y2 Judy reconnaissance aircraft, and 14 B6 and 2 chill torpedo bombers. It didn't take long for Zuikaku to enter action, as at 12.02 on the 21st of October, the sonar picked up noises of propellers beneath the waves. Zuikaku would continue to hear the enemy submarines beneath it until finally, at 12.13 on the 22nd of October, a torpedo wake was sighted to starboard, and Zuikaku entered evasive action and avoided being hit. Over the course of the next few days, Ozawa's force would be harassed by U.S. submarines. At 11.51 on the 24th of October, Zuikaku launched 33 aircraft, for which six were CAP fighters, and the remaining 27 were a part of a 72 aircraft strike force launched between the three Japanese carriers present. Zuikaku would only recover 12 of these planes. The remainder were either shot down or landed in the Philippines. At 7.49 on the 25th of October, Zuikaku's anti-aircraft gunners are placed in battle stations and the ship is ready for aerial attack. At 8.07, nine A6M5 fighters are launched to reinforce the ship's combat air patrol. At 8.08 a.m., just as the Japanese had predicted, Zuikaku's radar detected approximately 130 enemy aircraft off the port side at a range of about 6,000 meters. At 8.11, the battle flag is hoisted, and by 8.17, Zuikaku had visual contact with 11 Grumman dive bombers approaching at 220 degrees, which were in two groups. At 8.21, the ship finally opened fire, and at 8.28, it increased its speed to 24 knots. 
At 8.29, torpedo bombers begin their runs, and they drop their torpedoes, resulting in a single torpedo running close to the ship's starboard side, but just passing astern. At 8.35, Zuikaku is struck by three 500-pound bombs on the port side amidships. These hits result in fires in both the upper and lower hangars. At 8.37, the ship is struck by a single torpedo on the port side in the number 4 generator room. The number 4 generator room, auxiliary control panel, right low pressure electric distribution panel, left cable distribution room, number 10 cable passage, the number 8 cable passage, and the number 3 foam pump are completely flooded and placed out of action. The ship's rudder also fails to respond to the helm. As a result, manual steering is ordered, and the ship takes on a 9.5 degree list to port. At 8.40, the engineers reported that both port engines were shut down, and so the ship was only operating on its two starboard engines. At 8.45, after counter-flooding operations, the ship's port list was reduced to 6 degrees. At 8.54, the fires in the upper and lower hangar were reported to have been under control. At the same time, it became apparent that all of Zuikaku's transmitters were out of action, meaning it was no longer an efficient platform to operate as flagship, and so Admiral Ozawa prepares to transfer his flag to the light cruiser Oyodo. At this time, Zuikaku's speed was reduced to 23 knots. The first attack wave concluded, and Zuikaku was quite heavily damaged, but the ship was still fully operational, and at 9.53, as Admiral Ozawa was preparing to transfer himself and his staff to the Oyodo, a second attack wave was spotted. At 9.58, Zuikaku's anti-aircraft guns opened fire, and by 10.08, the second attack wave had concluded, with no hits being scored on Zuikaku. At 10.33, Oyodo pulled along Zuikaku's port side, and Admiral Ozawa, along with his staff, boarded one of Zuikaku's small boats at 10.51, and at 11 a.m., the Admiral's flag was now aboard Oyodo. At 11.02, Zuikaku's lookout sight aircraft in the clouds above the ship, and Zuikaku opens fire, but by 11.20, with the aircraft having not carried out any attacks, Zuikaku's anti-aircraft guns once again go silent. At 11.45, Zuikaku's speed was recorded at 18 knots. At 13.06, visual contact is made with the formation of enemy aircraft, and by 13.09, Zuikaku's anti-aircraft guns once again open fire. The ship increases its speed to 24 knots, and at 13.21, two torpedoes strike the port side in the vicinity of the forward 12.7cm anti-aircraft gun. One torpedo fails to detonate, while the other does detonate, killing the crews of the 12.7cm anti-aircraft guns in that area, and flooding the torpedo maintenance shop. As a result, the ship's port list increased to 14 degrees. Over the next couple of minutes, the ship is hit by a series of bombs and torpedoes in quick succession, so there is no particular order to these hits. A torpedo struck the ship on the starboard side, flooding the number 3 boiler room. Three bombs struck the flight deck aft of the number 3 elevator, which resulted in fire spreading in both the upper and lower hangars. Three more bombs struck the flight deck between the number 2 and 3 elevators, resulting in further fires within the hangars. Finally, two more torpedoes struck the ship on the port side. The first one resulted in flooding of the number 2 and 4 boiler rooms, and the other torpedo struck the forward port engine room. At 1323, all four of the ship's turbines and the rudder were out of operation, the port list increased to 20 degrees, and the ship was now drifting to a stop. At 1325, the third attack wave ended, and Zuikaku's anti-aircraft guns once again fall silent, though the crew did not realize this was the final time. At 1327, all hands are ordered to gather on the deck, around the vicinity of the island, as Captain Kaizuka addresses the crew, and he tells them that he intends to go down with the ship. The crew salutes him, and the naval ensign is lowered, and the ship's crew gives a final bonsai. At 13.58, with the port list having increased to 23 degrees, the formal order to abandon ship was finally given. At 14.14, Zuikaku rolled over to its port side and sank stern first, taking with it 842 men, while 862 were saved. 
what ended up becoming the most decorated aircraft carrier in the Imperial Japanese Navy, and one of the original six aircraft carriers to attack Pearl Harbor, was finally gone. From that moment forward, Japan's aircraft carriers would never again be capable of assembling any form of an offensive. With that having been said, that is all I have to say on this topic for today. So, if you have learned something new in this video, why not leave a like and a comment down below, and have a wonderful day.